Thank you. All right. So all the pretests are already here. I'm not going to send you any new pretests. Okay. So go ahead. Those of you who are planning to take the uh, semi cumulative, please go ahead and start reviewing them. Okay. Also, please review the first, second, and the third pretest. There are going to be no new questions on the uh, semi cumulative same exact question from the previous exams. So please start reviewing your, you're welcome to come to my office and look at your old exams. Okay? All right. Open. All righty. No copying, no notes taking. <laughs> no. No hidden devices allowed. Nope. Okay. All right. So all on this exam, as you can see, answers are already marked. Okay, with the asterisk. There are a few that are few questions that answers are not marked. I think 21. 21 blank is asexual spore enclosed in a sac. Sporangio spore C. 21 is C. 22, a dimorphic fungus. Mm, cannot transform its shape. Not true. Can grow in two different shapes. True. Can transfer from yeast to mold. True. So both B and C. D is the correct answer. D. Okay. 23, which of the following is not true about fungi? Eukaryotic, true. Chemoheterotroph, true. Most are separable, all are true, true. D, everything else is fine. Okay, uh, yep, 25. Make sure you know the, you have the handout, this handout that I have, and the diagrams of the asexual and sexual spores, okay. Same diagram, same exact diagrams, yeah. All right. Uh, and part, those of you who got the diagram last time in the lab, you have the correct diagrams. In this package, I made a mistake, and I think you don't have the helical, you don't have helical um, naked. Just remove the, an the envelope, please. In this diagram, remove the envelope. Then you have helical, naked helical. OK? Everything else is all right. Yeah. Everything else is OK. <coughs> it's a for the viruses. viruses, correct. You already have that. Fungal spores. Fungal spores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions before we start the new material? Sure. Capsid, capsomere. Yeah. Capsid is um, in this diagram, this whole thing that is made up of little circle. The whole thing is the capsid. Each little circle that makes up the whole thing is a capsomere. Building block of a capsid is capsomere. Sure. All right. <clears throat> so we start chapter 16 and 17. Selected topics from those two chapters. That include non-specific and specific immunity.
as long as we are healthy, this is our umbrella of protection right here. Okay. This side of umbrella on your right, okay, this is the first line of defense, your skin, healthy skin, interferon. Every single cell of your body makes this protein. The purpose of this protein is to control the spread of viruses. Okay. If every cell makes it, how can we get viral infections? Amount. Amount of interferon that is made is so minute and the viruses replicate so fast that this overwhelms. Okay. Lysozyme enzyme that destroys the peptidoglycan, phagocytosis. So this is non-specific okay, line of defense, first line of defense that doesn't discriminate between organisms, that protects you indiscriminately. Okay. Second line of defense that is very specific, antibodies will protect you from specific type of microorganisms. Cellular immunity protects you from specific and so on. We are constantly bombarded by microorganisms, allergens, toxins, parasites. As long as our umbrella of defenses is strong, we are protected. When you, as we grow old, old, or if we have holes in our umbrella, broken skin, or okay, very first thing that goes away as we age is phagocytosis goes down, and we have a gland right here on top of our heart. It's called what? Thymus gland. Right there. This is the only gland where T lymphocytes mature. Okay? The size of this is about the size of your fist or a little smaller. Okay? This gland shrinks with age. So that's why it's extremely important for elder people to get a shot of flu, flu vaccine, okay? Because that's the only gland where your T cells are maturing. So with age, you have fewer and fewer T cells. And that, those are the cells that provide you cellular immunity, protection from viral diseases, okay? B cells, on the other hand, B lymphocytes, they can mature in different organs of your body, adenoid tonsils, appendix, pyres, patches, spleen, and so on. Okay. Alrighty. So before we start, the first line of defense or non-specific defense is the host. Let's quickly go over it, the terminology that is associated with first and second line of defense. You do have the terminologies in your notes, if you have the notes in front of you, right? Yeah. Okay. Resistance, ability to fight off disease. It could be non-specific resistance, healthy skin, or it could be very specific, antibody. Okay. Lack of resistance is called susceptibility. Broken skin, okay. Diabetes, susceptibility, okay. Lack of T4 cells, susceptibility. How about baldness, susceptibility? Yeah. Cancer, skin cancer? Mm-hmm, susceptibility, yeah. All right. Antigen, antigen. Uh, antigen is, all, if this is true, tell me if this statement is true or false. Antigen is always a foreign substance that introduces an immune response in an immunocompetent host. Antigen is always a foreign substance that initiates, triggers an immune response in an immunocompetent host. False. It could be self too. Autoimmune diseases, right? Autoimmune diseases. So antigen could be self or foreign, okay? 
that triggers an immune response in an immunocompetent host. Okay. Two types of antigen. Some antigen they need the help of T helper cell, TH cell, which is the target of HIV virus. So that's why those people who have HIV, they are in big trouble because they cannot make antibodies against those antigens that are T dependent. So antigen, okay, if I'm, I'm going to show you this, I will give you this handout next time. Here it is. This is the process of antibody synthesis, okay? This is how your body makes antibodies. And this is T independent antigen, T independent. This is a bacteria. Your body comes in contact with this uh, uh, bacteria. Phagocytic cell engulfs it, okay? If this is T independent, this is what's going to happen. Phagocytic cell is going to engulf it. Phagocytic cell will become antigen presenting cell. Like in African tribes, when they hunt a big animal, they show off their kill. Look what I did. I killed this big animal like lion or zebra or whatever. They show it to their tribe. Phagocytic cells are just like that. They, when they phagocytize something, okay, this is what normally happens in phagocytosis. Here. Oops, okay. Here's the process of phagocytosis. They phagocyt phagocytize bacteria, goes in, okay. You see they're spitting everything out. Not everything comes out, okay. They keep the good part of the, this bacteria. Like the African tribe, they keep the, the meat and the head to show off. This phagocytic cell, it shows off antigens of the bacteria on its surface. You see these dots right, right here? Those are the antigens of this bacteria right there. Okay. Non-antigenic parts, like the guts of the bacteria, if you want to call them, guts, spleen, they are thrown out. But the good parts are kept on the surface. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> really? What are they? Okay. So, yep. Good parts essentially have a function. Exactly. No. So, this phagocytic cell now becomes antigen presenting cell. It presents the cell to the factory that turns the antigen into. What? Antibodies. Okay. Yeah. That's the function of that, that antigen good part. By itself, non, no good? Psst. Excreted outside the body <laughs> through urine or other. But it doesn't, that doesn't interact with anything. That just dies or becomes. Excreted, so released from the body. Yep. It's just floating out mm -hmm. the yeah. Yep. It won't negatively interact with something else like No, not antigenic. That's the waste products of our body that are released. Yeah. Okay. So, two types of anti antigens, T dependent and T independent. Heptin. Heptin. Not all antigens can initiate an immune response on their own. Okay. There is a certain criterion for a molecule to be antigenic. And one of that criterion is molecular weight. And the minimum molecular weight for a molecule to be antigenic is 10,000 Daltons. Okay. A molecule must be this weight. Okay, uh, we will look at this later, but a molecule must meet this criteria. We will we'll look at this. What if it is 5,000 Dalton? What would you call it? 
heptane. It must combine with another molecule that is 5,000 Dalton in order to become antigenic. So an incomplete antigen is called heptane. An incomplete antigen that cannot trigger an immune response on its own. That's a heptane. A good example of that, poison IV. Poison IV, there's a chemical in poison IV called catecholamine. It's like oil in poison IV. Poison IV by itself is non-antigenic, non-allergenic, but when you rub against it, it reacts with your protein of your skin. Now it becomes complete antigen. Now it is allergenic, okay, antigenic. So heptin, yep. Just kind of off subject. So how do you have an immunity to poison IV? What's the difference on your skin? Like, so if you're brushing it for that and you don't break out? People are, uh, people are uh, immune to, to poison IV. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you can be desensitized. You can be desensitized over a long period of time. Human body reacts differently. If you're exposed to catecholamine in large quantity, your body will produce IgE. But if you go to, a, let's say, if you're allergic to poison IV, go, you go to an al uh, allergist. You will be given catecholamine in minute quantities over two or three years. Your body will produce a different type of antibody, IgG. So as soon as you come in contact with poison IV, it will remove, and it will be phagocytized and removed from your, from your system. That's called desensitization. Yeah, that's desensitization. That's how you become immune to something. If you are allergic to something, you go to allergist, and they will give you the same thing that you are allergic to over a long period of time. Okay. The same thing in minute quantity, and your body responds and makes a different type of antibody. Instead of IgE, which is bad for you, you make IgG, which is good for you. Okay? <clears throat> antibody. Antibody is a protein that is made in response to a specific antigen. Antib all antibodies are proteins. All antibodies are proteins, and they are made in response to a specific antigen. Just like one substrate, one enzyme, right? One antibody, one antigen. What is the shape of an antigen? Physical shape of an antigen, remember? Y, capital Y. Capital Y shape, yeah, with no belly, sorry. <laughs> B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes or B cells. What does B stand for? Big? Hmm? B, okay, let's start with T, T lymphocytes. T, you should know. Anatomy and physiology? Thymus, that's fine. Okay, T, because T cells, they mature in thymus, so T. B, bone. Okay. They were first isolated from, let me show you the picture, then you can answer it very easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay. Butt of a bird, seriously. Bursa, exactly. Bursa of fabricus. That's where they were first isolated, right there. Bursa of fabricus. Yep. <laughs> Bursa of fabricus. There's a gland in the cloacal opening of a birds. That's where they were first isolated. Okay. That's why they are called B lymphocytes. Okay. All right. So what do they do? They provide us humoral immunity, humoral, from humor. 
person who had lots of B lymphocytes is very funny. No. <laughs> what is humoral immunity? Humoral immunity is if the pathogen is toxin is present in body fluid. If the pathogen toxins okay, is in body fluids, this type of immunity will protect you. On the other hand, if the pathogen has invaded your cells, your tissues, then this type of immunity will not protect you, then the T cells will protect you. Oh, B cells protect us by making what? Antibodies. Antibodies. T cells, T lymphocytes, they protect us at, they provide us cellular immunity at the cellular level, cellular immunity. If the pathogen has invaded all viral diseases, okay, many protozoal diseases like malaria, okay, toxoplasma gondii, toxoplasmosis, and many other diseases that are intracellular parasites, we get protection from T lymphocytes. Okay. How? What do they make? T lymphocytes make what? Proteins, very good, called lymphokines. 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 Both of these, they have similar functions. Okay? Both of them, they kill microorganisms, true or false. Antibodies and lymphokines, they kill microorganisms. True or false? They kill microorganisms. <laughs> false. False. They don't kill. But they help in killing. They are death flags. They are death markers. So they enhance phagocytosis by attracting phagocytic cells. So any substance that enhances phagocytosis is called opsonin, number nine, opsonin. Both are opsonin. They enhance phagocytosis. Vaccine, antigen that protects the host from specific disease. Could be one antigen or could be multiple antigens. So those are the terminologies. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's talk about the four different nonspecific methods that protect you from all different types of diseases, doesn't matter bacteria, virus, fungal, or others. Constitutional factors, physical and chemical, cellular and microbial factors, which are your normal flora. Under constitutional factors, the very first type of defense is called species resistance. Okay. Birds are naturally, naturally resistant to anthrax. If you have a parakeet, okay, and your vet has been charging you for vaccination of anthrax, run away, got a different vet. Because birds don't get to <laughs> anthrax. Dogs get them, okay. Cats get them, humans get them, dogs don't, I mean birds don't. Mumps. Humans get them, dogs and cats don't. Plague. Okay. Humans are extremely susceptible. Rats, rodents are resistant. That's why they were responsible for spreading it 
uh, in Europe. Okay. Black Death. Race or strain resistance. Just because you're black or white, you're either protected or you're susceptible to certain type of diseases. African blacks are more susceptible to tuberculosis and malaria. You may want to add malaria to this, please. Whites, on the other hand, more susceptible to influenza, diphtheria, and gonorrhea than blacks. Go figure. I have nothing to do with this. I'm just messenger, OK? Gender. Male or female, can't say that for sure. Who is more susceptible or resistant to which disease? Yes, we can. There are certain diseases that, of course, female gets them. So a yeast infection, of course, females get them more often, right? So why can't we? Huh? Bladder infection. Bladder infection, sure. So I don't know why the book says that. So I'll take this off take it out in my new notes. So sure, uh, sure, I'll take it out. So yeah, and in a, f in a controlled study, yeah, it was proven that female mice, they're 20% more resistant to typhoid fever. Okay, typhoid fever I can understand, but the, definitely there are certain diseases. Female are more susceptible to, so susceptible than uh, male mice. Can you think of any disease that male are more susceptible? Infectious. Hmm. No. Infectious disease. You really want to see? Them too? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> no I, I don't think so. There. CDC, according to CDC data, it's the same. Yeah. No, no guesses? Infectious diseases. Okay. okay. Let me find out. I'll try to find out to see if there <clears throat> there may be non infectious diseases so there's some non infectious yeah. uh, I'm missing something here. I know what nutrition number four you are what you eat true absolutely okay, especially proteins play an important role in your diet. Why protein is are so important? Everything is made up of protein, enzymes, metabolic activities take place. I mean, without enzymes, no metabolic activity can take place. New cells are made up of protein. All antibodies are made up of proteins. So proteins play an important role. Okay. Um, this is a guinea pig. They fed cabbage to this guinea pig, and they found out that the susceptibility to salmonella was reduced. So if you eat cabbage on a regular basis, you will have antibodies in your system. I don't know what type of cabbage, coleslaw, or whatever, but this, yeah. Cabbage, I don't know, yeah. Does cabbage have protein in it? More fiber. Age, very young, six months and under, and very old, like me, not, okay. <laughs> 85 plus, <laughs> are more susceptible to disease. Okay. Six, uh, six months and younger, they have two types of immunity. IgG, what they receive from mommy through placenta. And if mom is lactating the babe, baby, uh, IgA in breast milk. Okay. Um, nowadays there are breast milk banks. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Breast milk banks, banks. 
Some, some ladies cannot lactate because of medical reasons. Some because of cosmetic reasons. They don't want to. Okay. So, yep. So, they can go to this uh, uh, breast milk bank and they can, I think it's free. They don't charge for it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they will ship it to you. Okay, or they are local in the community too. You can go online and figure out. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting debate. Yeah. Older people, I told you two things happen as we age. Number one, the size of the thymus goes down. And number two, phagocytic activity goes down. All right. <clears throat> Physical and chemical factors. The best physical protection that we have is our healthy skin. People, some people, they sweat a lot. Sweat a lot. Okay. Um, good thing, bad thing. No. Because the people who sweat a lot, they are more susceptible to what type of diseases? Fungal diseases. Because fungus prefers to grow in high moisture environment. And the, if there's too much moisture, uh, acidity also increases with the skin. And fungus prefers to grow in acidic environment. So they are more susceptible to athlete's foot. Okay. Uh, tinea corporis, body fungus, uh, and other fungal infections. But healthy skin is supposed to be low in moisture content. Not completely dry, but low moisture content. Lactic acid, we have slight, light, little bit of lactic acid on our skin that comes from our normal flora. Okay, my, uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis and other bacteria. pH is normal healthy skin is three to five. Lysozyme, our uh, sweat glands produce. Sebaceous glands produce minute quantities of sebum, which is saturated fatty acid. Some people produce tons of oil that we can export to other countries. Not good. Okay. <laughs> Some people this, they produce large quantities of oil. Okay, that clogs their pores. That's not good either. Okay. Oh. Mucous membrane, another excellent protection. Internal organs respiratory tract, digestive tract, other internal reproductive organs. I've been demonstrating this so many times during my presentations here. <clears throat> well, here we go. Mucous membranes covered with goblet cells that produce mucus. And then they are also covered with ciliary escalator. Anything that, any debris, foreign particle that is trying to get into the respiratory tract or in the digestive system, trapped by the mucus, ciliary escalator throws it towards the throat, goes to the stomach, acidity takes care of it, or you sneeze or cough it out. But there are some pathogens that can penetrate right through your healthy mucous membrane. Treponema pallidum, syphilis, tuberculosis bacteria, streptococcus, pneumonia. These bacteria, they can penetrate right through the healthy mucous membrane. Okay. Third cellular factor, three major cellular factors that protect us from getting sick. <clears throat> inflammation. Is inflammation always good? Yes, no, yes? no maybe. <laughs> Tell me one condition where inflammation is not good. Not good. Arthritis is not good. How about if your lungs swell up? Not good. Asthma, not good. Bronchi swell up, right? No good. Yeah. Tell me when swelling is good. Fever, yeah. That's not swelling. Fever is good. Swelling. <laughs> Damage tissue. That's good. Yeah. Good. Very good. All right, so let's look at damaged tissue, the process of inflammation. All right.
bacteria? Healthy skin? Yeah, yeah mucous membrane. They have the bazookas that other bacteria, yeah, they have the mechanism enzyme that allow them to penetrate our skin. The others don't have. Okay, here's your finger. Okay, here's your finger, and you are preparing your food for your guests. This yellow are the tissue. Okay, yellow layer in the background. And here's a capillary passing through your, could be several capillaries passing through your finger. Okay, <clears throat> preparing food and you accidentally prick your finger, preparing your food. As soon as you prick your finger, what is supposed to happen? Ouch, a normal person will say ouch, right? And try to stop the bleeding. All right. That ouch response comes from See this triangular brown structure right here? This is called bradykinin, okay? Let me pull this up so you can see the name of this thing right here. This is called bradykinin, B-R-A-D-Y-K-I-N-I-N. The chemical is bradykinin. It has two functions, bradykinin. You can see two arrows. One arrow going to the pain nerve that's in your finger. That's the ouch response. So first function of bradykinin, to trigger the pain nerve, okay, so you can respond and stop bleeding. Person who has diabetes, okay, when they cut themselves, okay, in their extremities, no out response, they keep on bleeding. That's how they get contaminated with spores of, of clostridium perforant genes, gangrene and all that. They keep on bleeding and that's how they get gangrene. And that's they are amputated. Now, the person who is preparing your food, let's say if this person happens to be diabetic, you will have extra gravy on your food. Oh God, bad teacher. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry, let's come back, okay. So, Ouch response, second response. Okay. This bradykinin is going to trigger mast cells, which are hand grenades. Carrying what? Carrying what? Histamine. Mast cells are special white blood cells, basophils, that carry these blue dots. Histamine. Now, people who are allergic, okay, okay, as soon as they come in contact with allergen, they release histamine, and then they have to take antihistamine, right? What does histamine do? Histamine is vasodilator. So, as soon as bradykinin triggers the mast cell, mast cell dump all this histamine in the damaged area. So, and the Tissues and the capillaries, they open up, dilate. So what happens? The liquids ooze out into the damaged finger. It swells up. Okay, you see these liquids are coming out? Plasma. And here are your good soldiers coming out right here in the damaged area to investigate. What just happened here? Look, right here. Okay, and they are going to Capture the repeat offenders first. Here's a repeat offender. Okay, capture, arrest this repeat offender first. How do I know this is the repeat offender? Because there are antibodies right here. So they have the picture in their pocket. Aha, repeat offender, antibodies. So as soon as this bacteria enters, antibodies will attach, and that is called opsonization. Here's the first time offender right here you got no antibodies. This is a round bacteria. They will be arrested, but later. What if there are no bacteria on that knife? They will retrieve. They will go back as soon as you put ice or stop, squeeze a little bit, okay? In, within a few minutes to a few hours, everything will go back to normal. Okay, if there were no bacteria, no, no disease, nothing, 
and inflammation will retreat. Make sense? All right. So, bradykinin has two functions to trigger pain nerve and to trigger mast cells to release histamine and histamine is a vasodilator. Very good. Second cellular function is phagocytosis. Phagocytosis, before we look at the process of phagocytosis, let's look at different types of phagocytic cells. <coughs> Yes. Oh, because of the dilation, everything is blocked because the liquids are oozing out. Everything is dilated. Your, your openings are blocked. Exactly. Tissues and capillaries are dilated, opening up, so everything is congested. Okay? But your, your nose is drippy, your eyes are drippy because the liquids are being dripping. Everything is leaking out. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Phagocytic cells wandering, those are your soldiers, they're wandering in your body, okay, in your liquids, okay, um, looking for intruders, okay. Lymphocytes, monocyte, neutrophils. No need to know, mem no need to memorize the wandering type for the test. Test four, you need to memorize the three fixed types only, fixed phagocytic cells, which are called histiocytes. Kupfer cells found in liver. Where else do, are they found? I think they are also found in spleen. Spleen. After 120 days, RBCs, they go to graveyard and die. Uh, this is where they die. They die in spleen and liver, and uh, hemoglobin is turned into bilirubin. Yep. Alveolar macrophages keep your lungs clean, and microglial cells, they are found in your central nervous system, CNS, central nervous system. So these are the three fixed phagocytic cells that you just need to memorize. Okay. Now let's look at the process of phagocytosis. <clears throat> sure. Um, so, if histamines are good for you, why is it reaction? Histamine in large quantity is not good for you. Histamine in small quantity is good for you, not in large quantities. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Mm hmm. Perhaps one more time, David. You have an allergic reaction that's severe. Mm -hmm. If you're exposed in small quantities over time, you mm -hmm. still have that same reaction or you start to build up? You will build up uh, immunity, yeah. If you're exposed to the same allergen over three, four, five years, you will develop immunity. Yeah. So that's what they do with people that have severe allergies. Allergies to that, yeah. It's an allergy shot. Exactly. That's why you need to see the allergist for two, three years or sometime longer. And they give you a minute quantity of the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Does that go for the same way, like, from the allergy? Oh, for? Uh, if you were, you know, everything, everything. Even the, the poop of that bed, bed bug. If you're allergic to bed bug poop, when they tell you you're allergic to dust, that's the polite way of telling you you are allergic to the bed, bed bug poop. And that's what they're injecting into you. Mm -hmm. So, people are allergic to dust, that's what they're allergic to? Yep. Because dust is inorganic, inert particle. It cannot in, in, induce reaction. So when they tell you you are allergic to dust, there's something else in the dust, okay, most likely bed bug poop. Uh -huh. is, that, is that 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, that's it. Yeah. Use a HEPA filter in your vacuum. Helps a lot. Helps a lot. Yep. Mm-hmm. Space suit. <laughs> Helps, yeah. <laughs> Bubble suit. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Process of phagocytosis. Four major steps are involved in the process of phagocytosis. Chemotaxis or adherence, attract, uh, attachment, ingestion, intracellular digestion, and exocytosis. Okay, let's look at the diagram. Did I put the diagram here or there? This, <clears throat> now, th- this doesn't have to be microbial cell, any foreign particle, or uh, can it be s- something from inside your own tumor cell or something, dead particle from inside? Sure. Okay. Doesn't have to come from uh, outside. Any antigenic particle, or, or could, doesn't have to be antigenic, non antigenic, too. Because we are talking about immunity, so I'll consider this one antigenic microbial cell. Fine. Attachment or chemotaxis, chemical attraction. Okay. Ingestion. Ingestion, phagocytic cells, they do just like amoebas. You can see pseudopods are made. And then when they fuse together, pseudopods, a cavity is made. Okay. This cavity is called phagosome. Phagosome. Phagocytic cells are literally, they are full of thousands and thousands of small bags that are full of digestive enzymes. And these are called lysosomes. Lysosomes. After the formation of phagosome, lysosome and phagosome, they fuse together like this. Okay? Now, and all the enzyme, digestive enzyme from lysosomes are released in the phagosome. Now this right, uh, diagram right here shows you intracellular digestion. One thing that I will probably never forget from my graduate school, okay, that I learned you know, when I took an immunology course in grad school, <clears throat> that in, in phagocytosis, okay, if this bacterium is still alive at the time of ingestion right here, the phagocytic cells, they have a mechanism of putting this bacteria to sleep before they kill it. Yep. If this bacteria, they have a mechanism of sensing if this bacterium is still alive or dead. If this is dead, there is no sign of life in this bacteria, intracellular digestion will stop, start right away. If this bacterium is metabolically active, the bacteria will be put to sleep first. They have a mechanism called oxygen-dependent and oxygen-independent system. So that will take place, and then intracellular digestion. It means phagocytic cells are very humane. <laughs> really, <laughs> amazing, really. So, then it, uh, intracellular digestion. Antigenic parts are kept, non antigenic parts are released. Then, antigenic parts are, are expressed outside on the membrane. The phagocytic cell becomes what? 
antigen presenting cell. Question? Exactly. Which, which oh, which process? Yes. Okay. It depends if the bacterium is aerobic or anaerobic or facultative anaerobic. Okay. I fully do not comprehend if it is, what if it is facultative anaerobic, then what? It can go either way, right? But somehow they have this mechanism of putting it to sleep. I don't know fully understand why. Yeah. But it is based on uh, availability of oxygen and uh, non-availability of oxygen. It's oxygen-based system. Okay. Yeah. All right. Third and final uh, cellular factor is natural killer cells. The difference between natural killer cells and phagocytosis. Natural killer cells are like phagocytic cells, but they do not do phagocytosis. They wander around in our body, and they look for cells that are, that are invaded by parasites or cells that are tumorous or cancerous. Here's a natural killer cell. Okay. Whenever they find a cell that is abnormal or invaded by a parasite, okay, the membrane, they produce this pseudopod-like structures that will penetrate into the abnormal cell. And they will release, they say, cytoplasmic granules. These are actually digestive enzymes. They will release the digestive enzymes into the abnormal cell, which will cause the death of the tumor or abnormal cell. Uh, uh, pseudopods will retrieve, it will move on to kill another cell. Not a very effective method of taking care of tumor or cancer cell because these tumorous and cancer cells, they multiply much faster than they can kill them. They do one cell at a time. Not very effective method. Okay. How much time do we have? All right. There are types of T cells. T cells, yeah. <clears throat> uh, hmm. What is next? Microvectors. Uh, yeah. Microbial factors. Yep, microbial factors. Microbial factor is basically our own normal flora. Okay. Large intestine, we have E. coli, lactobacillus, and other normal flora that we talked about in chapter 14, 15. Okay. Um, they protect us. As long as we have our normal flora, we are protected. You remove the normal flora, and we all have salmonella in our intestine. If you get rid of E. coli, what will happen? The most common, um, mm, what, what can you say, uh, super infection is what in the United States? Super infection is C. diff. C. diff. Okay. Why? Because the person has been taking antibiotic for so long and their E. coli is completely gone. We all have C. diff in our intestine. When you remove your normal flora, Clostridium difficile will take its place and it will cause okay, enterocolitis, okay, inflammation of the intestine. So when you remove your normal flora, you are going to have what is super infection? When you remove your normal flora, it leads to the disease. When you, upon removal of the normal flora, okay, you get a disease. Okay? When you remove the normal flora of the vagina, then you get yeast infection. Yeast infection is super infection. Super infection doesn't mean a huge disease. No. Okay? Yeah. Antibiotics? Exactly. Exactly. 
So that is a super infection. Yeah. When you remove the normal flora, you get a, a different disease. <clears throat> or you can say when one disease leads to another disease, that is super infection too. I'm taking um, antibiotic for strep throat. Okay, I've destroyed my normal flora, and that may lead to enterocolitis. Okay, that is super infection. All right. Now, second. Now, from now we start the second line of defense. And from these two uh, categories, this is actually immunity now. Okay. Now, from point A and from point B, there are eight, at least eight questions. So I'm going to take my time to explain it to you. The immune response, okay, it just looks very simple, but okay, make sure you understand. Okay, there are a couple of type questions too. Second line of defense, specific immune response. Active immune response. Active response, active. Immune response is an immune response in which the host makes his or her own antibodies. Host. You come in contact with the antigen and you will make the antibodies. That is active response. Okay? That is active. Two types, two subcategories. Natural. Natural is unintentional exposure, like you are doing it right now. You're inhaling air. You had food this morning. You had food this afternoon. Okay, you had food last night. None of that was sterile, right? So that is unintentional exposure to an antigen. So an active, natural. You come in contact with the antigen unintentionally and you make your own antibodies. That is active, natural. Is it possible that you may get sick? Sure. It depends on the amount of pathogen that you may have consumed. It depends on the type of antigen you may have consumed. So it is not necessarily that the person may get sick in order to, to have an active natural. You may or may not. Okay. Active artificial intentional exposure to the antigen. Intentional exposure. You go to the doctor and you ask the doctor, give me the antigen. Vaccination. Okay. Intentional exposure to the antigen for the purpose of prevention, preventing a disease. Mm -hmm. Is that like uh, when we were kids and parents used to check the house parties? They're exposed to the yeah. chicken box parties? Oh, really? That's the first time I'm hearing it. Really? Really? And my, my parents didn't do it when I was a kid, and I got it when I was 25, and it almost killed me. <laughs> yeah, but but that, that would be a, a, an example, right? Yeah. If you expose it to intentionally, yes. Yeah, that would be an example. But I would rather go to a doctor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had the chicken pox, so if my daughter gets the chicken pox, am I going to get it? Or they checked it. I guess I have a titer for something. You have a titer? So you may have been exposed unintentionally. Okay, so yeah. more than likely I wouldn't get it? Probably not. Yeah. yeah. Could she have had a really mild case of that? Probably, yeah. yeah. I had mumps, but unintentionally. No, it's different. Yeah. Okay. Passive. Someone, someone else makes the antibodies for you. No. No, no, no. This is that you're not making antibodies. You are receiving antibodies. Someone else made the antibodies for you. You are receiving antibodies. You are receiving antibodies. You are being given antibodies. Okay? You are getting a shot of antibodies. Okay? Naturally, 
there's only one way you can get antibodies naturally. Mommy, when you are a fetus. Mommy to the fetus, not the baby. Baby is through the breast, right? That is not natural. Breast milk bank, right? That's not natural, okay? So, mommy to the fetus, that is natural. Only one way. Passive artificial. Breast milk bank. Or, horse to a baby. Yeah, yeah, but that's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll explain. Okay, someone else. Another individual, okay, One, from a snake to another individual. Yeah. Well, someone else makes the antibody and it's given to you. No, that was antigen. That was antigen. We are talking about antibody. Antibody now. Now, this is n not prevention. This is treatment. Okay, let me give you an example now. Let's say you go to a hospital and you apply for a job. And they ask you, one of the questions on the uh, application is, have you ever had a tetanus shot? And you say no. They say, go get a tetanus shot. Where do you fit here? Are active artificial, active artificial, active. Active artificial. Active antigen, antigen. Vaccine, vaccine. Now you are hired. Mm. Not yet. Not yet. Now, if you want me to put you in that category, give me a minute. Okay. Now you're hired. Now you're hired. Okay. Now you, this is what you got. Okay. You went to a doctor and the doctor gave you this active artificial. Okay. So you joined the hospital. God forbid you were going on the first day of the job and you got in a car accident. They put you in ER on the very first day. Now you receive, the very first thing they are going to do, they are going to give you passive artificial. You are going to get a tetanus shot. You already had a tetanus shot when you joined the hospital. They are going to give you another tetanus shot that is going to be passive artificial. Antibody that were made in a horse, because you may not have 24 hours to live. So they already have antibodies made in the horse. You are going to make your own antibodies that you, from antigen that you received two days ago. You already have antigen, but it takes two weeks for you to make antibodies. Now you are in an accident, you don't have time to make antibodies, so you're going to get passive artificial antibodies that were made in a horse to save you. Okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Everybody okay? Pardon me? No, 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 not at all. Two different things, okay? Person who receives antibodies is treatment, is prevent, is safe for a short period of time. This lasts longer. Active, okay? Active um, lasts much longer because you have memory cells. Passive, they don't produce memory cells. How much time? Okay. Yeah. Antibodies. Antibodies. Yes. Yeah. Antibodies. Yeah. Sure. Let's stop here. Okay. Good day. And a good weekend. <coughs> Yeah. 
Sure. Yeah. I'm going to take the class with the future. Sure. No problem. No problem. Sure. All right. Rabies, rabies vaccine? The two types. If, if you are already bitten, antibodies, if you get it before. Yeah, two different. Before you're exposed? Then antibodies, always, yeah, antibodies, antibodies then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? No, no, on the day of the exam. Yeah, sure. No, no, no. Pardon me? Oh, that is allergy. That's different from this. That's an that's a allergy reaction. That's a different thing. Oh, thank you very much. Um, after exam three, yeah. You are very polite. You should have said, darn it, wash it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Hi. What is this? Oh, not mine. Hi. Oh.